My name is Dr. Raditya Jati as the Deputy Minister of System and Strategy for BNPB, the Indonesian National Disaster Management Authority. I'm excited to introduce an initiative in Indonesia that bridges the knowledge gap in understanding this at the local level and the lack of expertise and human resources in risk assessment. In this presentation, I would like to talk about the commitment of Indonesia in reducing and managing disaster risk, the minimum service standard in risk information, innovation to increase the availability of risk assessors at sub-national level, and the mechanism of the national pool of risk assessment experts. I would like to talk about a national pool of risk assessment experts to bridge the knowledge gap in sub-national disaster management service implementation. To start with, we need to see how the prone Indonesian is to disasters. Due to its geographical, geological condition, Indonesia has been recognized as a laboratory for disaster studies. Indonesia also gifted with the vast archipelagic and cultural diversity adds the complexity for disaster management in Indonesia. The Indonesian National Disaster Management Authority or Badan Nasional Penanggulan Bencana BNPB has established a system called DB to collect, store, and analyze disaster data since 2008. Trend of disaster in Indonesia shows increasing number of hazardous events. In the last two decades, 2001-2020, it was recorded around 33,000 disaster events with more than 95% of disasters are impacted by hydrometeorological hazard. Aside of that, Indonesia also frequently hit by geological hazard with high impact such as earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruption. The most recent earthquake in Central Sulawesi 2018 triggered tsunami and liquefaction with 4,340 casualties. Indonesia is committed to the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, 2015-2030, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change and Sunday Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, 2015-2030. The Presidential Regulation No. 87-2020 on Indonesia National Disaster Management Plan led the nation to achieve its resiliency in 2045. As instructed by the President, the master plan must be conducted consistently with responsibilities and full commitment. To ensure the implementation of disaster management at local level, a regulation on minimum service standard in disaster management has been issued in 2018. This mandates the district government to provide basic minimum services to the communities such as risk information, preparedness measures, and emergency responses. This implicates that the district government must provide funding and other resources to meet the requirement known as the minimum service standards. The minimum service standards consist of A, hazard risk information, B, disaster prevention and preparedness, and C, disaster rescue and evacuation. These standards are divided into various activities such as risk assessment, dissemination, communication, information, and education on disaster risks. Development of disaster risk management plan, contingency plan, training, mitigation, drills, and etc. In this case, risk assessment is a requirement for the implementation of the other service and has created a huge demand for relevant expertise in risk assessment. Indonesia as an archipelago state has more risk because of its unique characteristics. The need of risk assessment experts to implement the minimum service standards is enormous. Indonesia has more than 500 agencies or districts. Each agency or district are required to provide their own minimum services. Indonesia is exposed to at least 11 types of hazard earthquakes and flood, landslide, 
volcanic eruption, tsunamis, etc., each hazard requires a specific assessment. This assessment requires a team of relevant experts to conduct different aspects of the assessment, hazards, vulnerability capacity assessment. Gaps and progress of the institutionalization of disaster research assessment in Indonesia consists of guidelines, funding, information technologies, and human resources. A guideline of disaster risk assessment has been issued since 2012. This guideline is being reviewed and will be updated. Funding of the risk assessment has provided by the national government through BNBB since 2012 or through project-based assessment by other organizations. The current regulation in minimum surface standards disaster management ensures the district government budget for risk assessment at the district level. As for information technology to collect the utilized risk data, we have established applications such as Inaris, DB, and etc. Lastly, concerning human resources, the pool of experts will address lack of experts and human resources and its spatial distribution throughout Indonesia. Since the last 10 years, only 245 districts conducted disaster risk assessment. This is less than 50% of the total 514 existing districts in Indonesia. Of those already conducted in risk assessment, 94 of them have expired as a risk assessment need to be updated every five years or when disaster materialized. Only two districts have updated their risk assessment. So, why do we need a national pool of risk assessment experts? Risk assessment expertise is not a common profession in Indonesia. Thus, the number of experts is limited. Distribution of experts is not equal, mostly in Java. The pool will enable easier access to experts by the local government. The needs of experts by the district government are immediate. It is expected that all districts will have conducted their risk assessment by 2024. Needs of system mechanism, the pool of experts as well as to promote the expertise, BNBB with the support of InvestDM 2.0 started developing the mechanism by developing a general guidelines on the management of the pool in 2020. The purpose of the pool is to make availability and readiness of the risk assessment experts at the local level, to ensure the standardization quality of risk assessment, enhance involvement of the provincial BBBDs to assist regencies, municipalities conducting risk assessment. This mechanism consists of five components, selection and recruitment of experts, training to ensure same understanding of the NBB risk assessment standards and requirement, certification of risk assessment experts, promotion and mobilization of experts to subnational government, monitoring and evaluation of performance of risk assessment experts. In addition, to ensure the operation of the mechanism, it will require supporting system such as information management, staffing, funding, guidelines, and SOPs. As for selection and recruitment process, risk assessment will be conducted by a team of experts. The composition of the team will be depending on type of hazard, the size of the target district, the number of sub-administration as such village, sub-district, and etc. There are 11 types of expertise required by risk assessment. Each expert or position require specific qualification and competencies. Team leader, hazard experts, type of hazards, GIS experts, spatial and land use experts, statistician, social science experts, assistant to experts, surveyor, facilitator, GIS drafter, administrative and logistic officer. The competency follows the national competency standards. However, not all profession expert position has established standards. In such a case, the competency is based on BNBB's established job profiles on risk assessment. 
it is expected that the current risk assessment competencies will be upgraded in the future. A recruitment team or panel based on to promote, announce the opportunity, shortlisting candidates, conduct testing and interviews, select the candidates, announcement. All candidates must follow the above process. As for the capacity building and the training, they will be provided to the selected expert to ensure a common understanding of PNPB risk assessment standards and requirements. Currently, the degree of head PNBB number 2, 2012, on the guidance of the disaster risk assessment. A module on risk assessment is developed to support the training and or self-learning. Currently, the training is provided for free subsidized by PNBB, potentially to delegate training implementation of PNBB, PUSTICLAT, or the training organization in the future. You can see the certification process, promotion and mobilization, as well as the purpose of monitoring and evaluation of the activities as displays on this screen. Lastly, this is the timeline of the pool of experts for Quick Win from 2020 until 2024. Thank you for attending the Ignite States. Let's work together and create sustainable resilience for sustainable development.